Hey everyone, this is Jason with Vilcoded Industries and I want to show you the Abacus A51 rack. Basically these uh, two top units here are the video and control combiner and then you've got the three Abacus chassis or rack mounts below that which are the brains of the system. And in order to get video into these systems you have to have everything synced with black burst or some kind of timing so I use the black burst out on the MX-50 and that goes into the reference input on each device and it loops out into the next one into the next one so that way the entire rack mount is uh, synced together and then above that I use the uh, Folsom Image Pro to convert my SDI signal to composite video or component and uh, that lets me go into the different units even the memory palace, stuff like that. And then you can see all the patch bays. Those are all handmade patch bays to save some money. And uh, every input and output in this rack is routed up to those patch bays and I can kind of hook it together quickly with one foot BNC cables. Just so you can appreciate the amount of noise this thing makes, let's turn everything on. We'll start with the combiner units. Turn the Folsom on. And the two chassis. And this thing gets really loud. It gets pretty annoying. And then uh, the heat generated is pretty, pretty rough too. It's hard to run these in the summertime. And I've had some issues here and there with them overheating when it's really hot. So that's the uh, Abacus A51 rack. So let's get on with the demo portion. This top unit is the control combiner, and this is where you plug in the controller with the joystick, and that fans out to all the chassis units below it. The second unit is the video combiner, where all the key inputs and video inputs go to, and it's a three-level keyer, where you connect all these chassis below. You can see two of them here, 
And these are the brains of the whole Abacus system where you plug in your video ins and outs and key ins and outs. And uh, all that goes into the combiner up top to create the composite views that you see in the recordings. So here we have our layout for today. Uh, the left side of the screen is Resolume and I use that to trigger all my videos and keys and background videos. As you can see there's three different layers and each layer is attached to a Blackmagic Intensity USB device so that each layer can be sent out on its own output in a composite and those all go into the different A51 rack mounts. In this setup we're using just two A51 racks with the video combiner and the control combiner. So the screen on the right with the desert scene is the output of the A51 video combiner. And that's just basically a three level keying device that lets you take three to four different videos and composite them on the same screen. And then below that is the live controller view where you'll see me pressing buttons and moving the joystick just so you can see how that works. And then uh, on channel B, we've got the status monitor for the A51. And this basically shows you all the data and um, switches and stuff that are controlling the effects in the Abacus system. And we'll get to that later. So first thing you want to do, uh, well, let's create a scene. Let's composite a desert scene with cactus and a moving background and then the uh, a Viticon logo flashing. We'll, we'll animate that flying in and then flying back out. So um, from Resolume here on the first layer, we're going to go ahead and trigger a background video. Let's start with this one. And you'll notice we don't see it currently because the desert scene is not keyed out. The black in the background is not keyed. So the first thing we'll do is turn on the key channel for that rack mount and then we'll turn on the keying feature and you'll immediately see the background disappear and now we can select the desert layer and we're able to zoom and pan and move it around and we can also rotate it in 3D forward and back, left and right so that's really the power of these units is the ability to position imagery in three-dimensional space. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create a scene. So we're going to move the desert down a little bit and scale it up. And there we can see the clouds and everything. And what we do in the Abacus, there's a compose mode. So we're going to turn on the frame store and we're going to select compose mode you can see that here and then I'm going to go ahead and turn the drop feature on and basically what that's done is stamped the desert scene on top of those moving clouds so if I select the desert layer again and move it down you'll see we've got a image left there so with that in mind let's add some cactus And there we go. You can see the keying is a little bit off because we're in the analog realm. So sometimes you got to play with the keying a little bit to get it to line up before you uh, stamp it. So we've got our cactus now. And we'll just zoom that down and place that in the image. And we'll just drop a few of them. Let's put one back here. And then let's put one up front here. Like so. Buttons are a little sticky because it's an old unit. And let's put another one way in the background over here up on the hill. All right. So there's your basic composite. We've put a desert scene in there that was keyed, put a few cactus in. And we've got the second Abacus rack mount playing a uh, animated background with clouds. So from here, we can select other things like, uh, let's do the Viticon logo. I'm going to see if I zoom this up. 
There it is. And we can basically animate that. So to do that, let's start it kind of small. And over here, off to the left. And we get into programming view here. We're going to go to the time menu. And we're going to make this about three to five seconds. And then we're going to go to the translate section where we can move it around. And we're going to first drop a keyframe. So we've marked the fact that that Viticon logo is off to the left. And it's going to start there, out off screen. And now let's animate it moving over. You can see it there. I'm going to bring it up a little bit bigger. And I'm going to put that keyframe there. And then we'll do one more keyframe with the logo zoomed up. Like so. And we'll add a third keyframe. So now we've got a basic animation. I can rewind to the beginning and hit start. And we'll fly the logo in. And there it is. So that's a basic example of how you composite on the uh, Abacus A51. In this example, let's go through the Abacus A51 warp card. We'll use the same layout with Resolume on the left and the uh, monitor outputs and controller view on the right. And I'm going to send out two videos this time. One is a background video to the first abacus and the animated film strip you're seeing on the screen through the second abacus. The film strip I made in Photoshop, I've got a big collection of movie posters and threw a few of those in there and some tarot card images and the one scrolling now is me as a kid. So first thing we do is let's crop out the background on the film strip. So we're going to select the crop feature and let's move the bottom crop first, now the top crop, and now we can see our water plane in the background and from here Let's go ahead and turn on the warp feature. So as we flip through the effects, you're going to see the cropping disappear. But once we find our effect, right here, the twist, and we turn the cropping back on, and there you go. You got your film strip twisted in the center. So if we go into the positioning of the warp and I twist the joystick we can start bending and warping on this film strip as you can see and then if we go into the source translate we can actually fly these film strips through the scene like an animation so not only does the warp warp the image but it creates animation paths with the same shape so you can fly things through. So there's several different effects. We can go back into warp and let me show you the helix effect. Go back, turn the cropping on. It's a similar effect, but it's just got more bends in it. You can get some really interesting animations out of this. You go into your source scroll and now we can kind of fly this right through the scene again but with more bends and twists in it. Of course you can keyframe all of this. Pretty cool. So let's check out the bow tie one. This one's kind of popular. I've seen this one in a lot of commercials in this era. You can kind of twist.
twist and warp all kinds of ways. There's a lot of effects in here. It does transitions as well. These kind of starburst effects. Let's find one here. This one kind of warps the uh, curvature. So you get the idea. You can do a lot of different interesting warping and animation effects with the warp card. So let's turn the warp back to the twist effect. Recrop it. Give it a bend. Let's rotate it. Like so. And then let me show you how the combiner works with Z keying. So currently the two planes, the water one and the film strip, don't intersect. Because we've got the film strip film strip set as priority it's always above the water image. But if we go into the combiner, we can turn this to Z priority mode, and you'll see the film strip now can intersect with other keyed out images and backgrounds. So if I go in and move the source again, I can go right through other image planes like so. You notice too where it's going through the water, it's kind of a sharp line. You can also soften it up. Watch here as I turn the transparency up, it'll kind of blur that line and make it more of a realistic look there. There you go. And of course, this can be applied to anything. Let's turn the cropping off and let's load up a logo let's key that logo out and the same thing applies just like that you can twist and bend pretty much anything that you make that's in a key format So that's your basics on warping and Z-keying with the combiner. This part I'd like to show you the animation section of the A51 and the combiner's light source. So the first thing we'll do is um, we're going to take this windsurfer and animate him surfing around a beach scene. And then we're going to use Resolume as a switcher and switch from the windsurfer to a Channel 7 logo and fly that in with a gleam effect. So let's first key out the background on the windsurfer and let's size him down let's start him way in the background off the screen let's maybe bring him up a little bit more so now he's off the side we're going to go ahead and 
go into the time menu and we want him to take about five or so seconds to go across the screen. We're going to animate him surfing across the screen at five seconds under keyframe duration. And then we basically go modify keyframe one. So now he's over there on the right. So to animate him, we go back into the source and bring him all the way across the screen. And I like to bring the zoom up a little bit. And then once he reaches the other side of the screen, we want him to flip the other direction because he's going to come back and go the other way. So in the input menu, we're going to switch it from front normal to horizontal inverse. And we're going to modify keyframe 2. So if we rewind at the beginning and hit play, we'll see him pass across the screen over a five second period. And then once he's off screen, he'll flip the other direction. So he's going to go back the other way. Okay. So now let's animate him going back the other way and zoom it up a little bit. And same thing in the input menu, we want to flip it back to normal. And we'll modify keyframe three. Rewind to the beginning and let's check the animation. looking good so now let's animate a third pass and let's scale them up even more go over to the input we want to put it on horizontal inverse and modify keyframe 4 going to the beginning hit play. Alright, looking good. So on this fourth pass, I'm going to bring him over and scale him up again. time menu make sure our input menu make sure he's on normal and then we'll modify keyframe 5 and then once the windsurfer is over here on keyframe 5 you'll see in the resolution view here we're going to turn on the logo and we're going to bring that out to about here and we'll modify keyframe 6 and we also want to turn on the lighting source at this point. We're going to put it on Gleam on the screen channel A and we're going to change the color from black to white. You'll see it change at the bottom and the positioning we're going to bring it right off screen and we'll go back and modify keyframe 6 again and then we're going to scale this up make the softness on the gleam a little wider and we're going to position it all the way to the top of the logo and we'll modify keyframe 7 so once the windsurfer passes the fourth pass I gotta switch over to the channel 7 logo and everything should work so let's get the windsurfer back up 
Let's rewind to the beginning and let's hit play. That's how you do basic animation and the light source in the combiner. This concludes the Apicus A51 demo by Vocoded Industries. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope everyone's doing well.